Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Earnings season is in full swing and we're learning a lot about what a lot of high flying tech companies and SaaS companies are doing. One company that I'm interested in hearing from is Asana. Now we don't won't get earnings results until June 1st from the company, but it's worth thinking right now about how the company is going to adapt to the current market conditions, especially compared to some of its rivals. So I want to highlight a few metrics that I'm looking at when earnings come out, because I think this is one of those companies that could go either way. This could be a phenomenal investment long term, and it could absolutely be a money pit as well. So that's what I'm going to dig into in this video. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Rav Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And let's get into what last quarter looked like at Asana. So this gives us a good framing for how to think about Asana in the first quarter. The company's revenues did continue to grow really significantly, 34% growth in the most recent quarter. That's the last quarter of calendar 2022. So that's really impressive. Operating loss was $99 million, losing $99 million on $150 million in revenue. Not a great look for a company like Asana. Cash flow was a negative $31 million. Now that was an improvement from a negative $39.3 million in the fourth quarter of fiscal 2022 but still a massive, massive cash burn. There were some positive signs here in business highlights. The number of customers spending over $5,000 increased 26% and revenue from those customers was up 42%. Dollar, dollar based net retention was 115%. So you want that number to be over 100% for any of these SaaS companies, but that's a really strong number. And then for customers spending over $5,000, that net retention rate was 120%. And over $100,000, it was 135%. So that tells us that Asana is moving up the stack pretty nicely. It's really a land and expand strategy. That's a positive trend from a sales side, but definitely not making its way to the bottom line. Here's what they expect for the first quarter, 150 to $151 million in revenue, representing 24 to 25% growth and an operating loss continuing at 38 to $40 million. Here's the thing I want to highlight. If we go down to the statement of cash flows, this is where the numbers get a little bit for confusing for a company like Asana, because like I said, they're losing $95 million in the quarter. That was the net loss, but cash used in operations was only $31.1 million. So what's going on there? Well, $53.1 million in stock-based compensation. That's the big number. That's where a lot of the company's loss is coming from. That ultimately either dilutes investors or reduces upside, depending on whether that is stock options that are being given to employees or restricted stock units. Either way, not great for the future of the company, but Asana does have $527 million of cash on the balance sheet. And remember that founder and CEO Dustin Moskovitz is a billionaire himself, has bought back over a billion dollars in stock in the last couple of years and continues to fund the company's cash needs. So it does have that to fall back on if things do get a little bit worse. Ultimately, there's two things that we need to see from Asana starting in the first quarter. One, and I think the most important right now is cost reductions. We do know that the company went through some layoffs. So some of those cost reductions will start making their way to the income statement, but we need to see those costs specifically the sales and marketing costs come down really dramatically because they've just been out of control in pursuit of this really high growth rate that Asana has made. But the company needs to prove now that it can get to operating cash flow and free cash flow positive. The other thing that I would like to see is organic growth. Can the company continue a relatively strong growth rate and high net retention rates, even if it's not investing quite as much money in that sales and marketing staff? That's going to be really telling for a lot of SaaS companies, including Asana. And right now the company isn't at a sustainable point. So while it has a lot of potential upside, it also has a lot of downside risk if it's not able to get to sustainable cash flow operations. So those are the big questions Asana needs to answer. It's not going to get to a final state in one quarter, but we do need to see big steps in the right direction. That's what we've seen some from some other big SaaS competitors and the market has reacted really positively. So can Asana make those big, big changes? That's what I have questions about. That's what I'm going to be looking for in the first quarter. But what do you think about Asana stock right now? Is the upside worth the potential risk in this stock? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow Rob Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.